Hey there, Tiffany Thomas with TheWealthyTiffany.com and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs. So you can have a better understanding of the differences and similarities between those three types of investments. And before we dive in, if you're ready for financial freedom, comment freedom below in the comments. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell to get notified on when I post new videos. And if you guys are serious about becoming financially free sooner than later, click the link below this video in the description and I can help you do that. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs because there's a lot of confusion around these items and they kind of get interchanged when people are talking about them. So I just wanna give you a quick basic overview of some differences and similarities between these three investment types that uh, you can do in the stock market. So let's talk about mutual funds for a second. There, so, okay, you have mutual funds. And there are two types of mutual funds. There are actively managed funds. So actively managed. And then the second type of mutual fund is an index fund, which is not actively managed. Okay, so when people are talking about investing in mutual funds, um, they're sometimes not clear on, on what they're talking about, whether it's an actively managed mutual fund or if it's an index fund. So let's just clarify. Um, an actively managed fund is when um, it's actively being managed. So someone is in charge of this fund and they are deciding what stocks to put in and if those stocks start you know, dipping down, then they decide to take out some of those and put in some different ones. Uh, so they're constantly changing that mutual fund, that actively managed fund. And it's usually uh, more expensive to invest in actively managed funds. They have a higher expense ratio. Um, and both of these types of funds have expense ratios. And when you are picking your investments, you wanna make sure that you are paying the lowest amount possible in fees. So you're going to have an expense ratio um, with actively managed funds and with index funds. Um, and the expense ratios for actively managed funds are higher than an index fund because they're actively manages, managed. Someone is deciding what stocks to pull in and out um, and when to replace them. And with an index fund, that is tracking something else. So it's not actively managed, it's just following an index. And let me give you an example. So there is a Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, and that fund follows the total stock market. I know that's kind of a long title for it, but it makes sense because it's an index fund that is tracking the total stock market, the US total stock market. Um, so when you are looking to invest, I actually really like investing in index funds because they have that lower expense ratio. And the higher the expense ratio, the more money is, that's going to be taken out of your investments and you won't be able to grow that money as much over time. So if you have a lower expense ratio, like with an index fund, um, you're actually making more money because Essentially, the actively managed funds, um, there's been a lot of studies done, and they actually don't have a higher return than an index fund. So that's, that's why I like index funds. They have a lower expense ratio, and um, they still get a really good return for you. So when you are talking about mutual funds, um, and someone is you know, telling you about them, make sure and ask, okay, is it an actively managed mutual fund? Or is it an index fund that you're talking about? Is it tracking something else? Uh, so hopefully that, that kind of helps a little bit. Um, so an index fund is just tracking something else. So it's going to cost less to invest in that because there's not someone actively managing that fund, like with an actively managed fund. Um, so you want to pay attention to those expense ratios. 
And like I had talked about before, that Vanguard total stock market index fund has a really low expense ratio. It's 0.04%. Um, so that's, that's super low. That's a super good expense ratio. And honestly, from my experience, I've seen in um, typical 401ks, when you have different funds to choose from, they're closer to 1% expense ratio, which may not sound like a lot, but that is, that's a huge amount. When you think about your investments that are going to, you know, start at thousands of dollars and go up to hundreds of thousands of dollars and even millions, um, when you take 1% of that away, that's a significant amount of money. So you really want to make sure you're investing in items and funds that have really low expense ratios. Okay, and then let's talk about um, ETFs. And make sure you can see this. ETFs are ex exchange traded funds. And they, they're they a little different from a mutual fund, um, but they act kind of like an index fund because they're still tracking something else. They're not actively managed. Um, so it is another type of fund, but it's an exchange traded fund, an ETF, and it's tracking something else. So there is um, an ETF that is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. So that is tracking the total US stock market. And it's really easy to invest in ETFs because they don't have a minimum amount that you have to invest. It's just the price of the ETF. So let me explain what I mean. Um, when you're purchasing ETFs, it's just going to be the price of the ETF itself. And with index funds, they set a minimum amount that you have to invest in order to invest in that fund. And the example that I used before, the total stock market index fund, the Vanguard total stock market index fund, that has a minimum amount of $3,000 to invest. So minimum to invest is $3,000. And not all index funds are, are that high, and some are actually higher than this. Um, but some of them could be a thousand dollars, or two thousand dollars, or you know three thousand dollars, or even up to ten thousand dollars, depending on your fund. Um, but um, you want to keep that in mind when you are you know deciding what you want to invest in. And if you don't quite have that three thousand uh, dollars, then maybe you want to start with the ETF and invest in the ETF. And the example that I gave, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. Um, it's priced at about $143, $143 right now. So that's quite a significant difference, right? $143 compared to the $3,000. Um, so ETFs are easier to get started in if you don't have quite as much money to uh, begin investing. Uh, if you only have you know, a couple hundred dollars versus a few thousand dollars, um, then you can start investing in ETFs. And ETFs kind of act like a stock in the fact that you can purchase the ETF throughout the entire stock trading hours, that the stock trading day hours. Um, you can choose to purchase the ETF, um, let's say at noon or something for whatever price it's showing currently at the ETF, on the ETF. Um, so if it's showing you know, $144 at noon, you can go ahead and purchase it for $144 and you immediately have purchased that ETF. And with an index fund, um, you have to wait until the end of the day, until the close of the trading hours of that day. And whatever the price is for that index fund is what you'll pay. Um, so it's, it doesn't act like a stock in the sense that it's, you know, that price fluctuates throughout the day and you can purchase at any time during the stock trading hours. Um, you have to wait until the index fund gets priced at the end of the end of the day and that's the price that you'll pay. So you, you're actually purchasing it at the end of the day, even if you place your order at the beginning of the day.
Um, so that is another difference um, that you want to keep in mind when you are deciding whether or not to invest in an index fund or an ETF. And also, um, you know, if you want to purchase, you know, more than one share, maybe you have a thousand dollars, but you don't have three thousand dollars, then you can definitely purchase more than one share of the ETF at a time. And you know, you can decide how much you want to to invest at that time and purchase multiple shares of the ETF. Um, and you can also do that with the index fund. So if you, you know, have more than $3,000 to invest, um, but you have at least that $3,000, then you can invest more money in an index fund. Um, but you just have to have that initial $3,000 to start investing in that index fund. And also with an ETF, you also have a, an expense ratio. So you want to make sure that the expense ratio is low on your ETF as well as if you were going to invest in an index fund. And the example that I've been using, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, is 0.04%. So it's the exact same as the index fund of the Vanguard Total Stock Market index fund. Uh, so super low ratio, um, but you want to pay attention to that when you're deciding on which ETF to invest in because you want to keep that expense ratio as low as possible. And when you are purchasing ETFs, there will be a commission fee or a commission charge. Uh, most of the time, depends on who you are investing with. Um, but for example, if you were investing with Vanguard, they charge a $7 commission fee. So since an ETF is similar to a stock, you're going to be paying that commission fee each time you buy and sell your ETF. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind when you are looking to invest in an ETF instead of an index fund. Um, there's, if you're investing at Vanguard and purchasing a Vanguard index fund, there's no commission fee. Uh, there's no one-time fee to invest in an index fund, but there is with an ETF. Uh, so that's another difference that you want to keep in mind. So ETFs are kind of like when you're buying stocks, you're going to pay that commission fee. Um, and I actually buy stocks uh, through my Ally account, Ally Invest, um, and they charge $4.95 each time I buy a stock or sell a stock. So you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at investing in ETFs. And then another thing to keep in mind, if your ETF has a dividend, uh, so if they're paying you a little bit of money um, for investing in the ETF, then you want to, if you want to reinvest that dividend, um, then most likely you'll have to pay that commission fee in order to reinvest that dividend into, your, into the same ETF. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you, you'll just look at the ETF and it will tell you whether or not they give you dividends, whether they pay you out um, either quarterly or yearly. Um, and if they do and you want to reinvest that dividend, so it's just a really small percentage of what you have invested, um, then you most likely will need to pay that commission fee um, in order to reinvest that dividend. So that's kind of an, an advantage that index funds have over ETFs. Um, they'll automatically reinvest your dividends for you without charging any sort of fee at all. Okay, and there are a, a few tax differences that I want to point out. Um, so if you are investing in a tax advantaged account, then you don't have to worry about this. So for example, if you are investing in your 401k or an IRA, um, then you don't actually have to worry about this um, right now. But if you have it um, just in a brokerage account, um, then I just want you to pay attention to this. So when you're investing in index funds and ETFs, um, they hardly switch out um, the stocks inside of those index funds or ETFs. Um, so you're not going to be paying capital gains tax taxes um, that much with index funds and ETFs, but actively managed funds, since they are actively managed, you will see a lot more um, stocks coming in and out of these actively managed funds 
So you will be paying more in capital gains tax. Um, so just pay attention to that. And I'm not going to go into great detail about this, but I just want you to be aware um, that the actively managed funds, you will be paying more in taxes because things are going to be switched up a lot more than in index funds or ETFs. Um, they don't trade out their stocks as much. So you're not going to have that capital gains tax that you'll have to report and pay taxes on um, for that year. So to kind of recap, what should you be investing in, an index fund or an actively managed fund or an ETF? Um, I would actually stay away from actively managed funds. They have that higher expense ratio that we talked about, and you'll be paying more in capital gains tax because of how much they switch around things in that fund, in that mutual fund and you're not getting a higher return um, by investing in that actively managed fund. You're just not. Um, and you can do research on the internet. Um, there's been a lot of studies done about this. So I would recommend um, active, or, um, <laughs> index funds or ETFs for investing. And you guys, I don't want you to get too hung up. Like if you think, oh, index funds are so much better, I need to wait until I have my $3,000 to invest my money. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that route. I would get your money invested as soon as possible. So if you only have a few hundred dollars, I would go with the ETF and get your money invested. Get it working for you sooner than later uh, because the earlier you start investing, the more money you can make over the long term. Uh, so I would get started with an ETF and pay that commission fee um, $5 up to maybe $10. I definitely wouldn't pay more than $10. Uh, but I would, yeah, I would just get started and, you know, get your money working for you. And if you do have the 3000 then I would stick with an index fund um, just because you don't have um, that commission fee that you're paying. And usually it's going to be a lower expense ratio. Now, Vanguard, the example that I gave, they have the exact same expense ratio. But if you're comparing... Um, I don't, there's a lot of different funds you can invest in, and usually you'll see ETFs have a higher expense ratio than an index fund. So you really want to watch that. You want to pay attention to your expense ratios. Um, but if you do have that 3000 to get started, um, then yeah, I would go with the index fund. And you know, if you only have a few hundred coming in to invest you know, every month or something, then go ahead and invest in the ETF. And if you want to switch that over later to an index fund, you can always do that. Or you can honestly leave it in your ETF. Um, because the way, the way that I teach is to invest for the long term and not worry so much about the short term. And if that's what you're doing, um, then you're not going to be paying a lot of commission fees because you're just buying that one time and you're leaving it in there for a long time. And then, you know, once you've bought like 200 shares of the ETF or something, you can cash that all out and just pay the commission fee once. So you're not paying for each share of the ETF, you're just paying for that transaction. So if you're buying more than one share at a time of the ETF, so if you're buying 10 shares of the ETF at once, you're only going to pay the $5 charge once. And then when you sell it, if you cash out 200 shares, then you're only paying $5, right? So it's not, it, you're not paying for each share. Um, so yeah, hopefully this kind of gives you a good idea on mutual funds, actively managed funds, index funds, ETFs, and you can kind of, you know, move forward from there and get started investing. Um, start your money working for you so you can become financially free sooner than later. And if you guys have more questions, please post them below. And if you have other ideas that you want me to create content for, create videos for, please post that in the comments below. I would love to know that and love to create content for you guys. And this was actually a suggestion that came from someone. Uh, so I was happy to make this video. And if you guys found this video helpful, please like it and share it with someone else who needs this information. And you guys, if you're really serious about becoming financially free sooner than later, then click the link below this video in the description and I can help you do that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.